Please welcome Heba Gwib, BMW Foundation, Herbert Quant. Hi, it's me again. You know my name by now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these days we talk a lot about the planet, which is very important, but it's also very important to talk about our own health. And we all know that a lot of ingredients in our foods are animal-based, synthetic, and have highly processed um, ingredients. And this can also can all be replaced by natural-based materials. And this is exactly what the coming startup company is doing. They research and develop clean plant-based uh, food by using technology, biotech, AI, and machine learning they identify components from nature that can replace those in the food we eat today. So I want to present to you um, Life Green Co. that responds by fusing nature and science for next-gen plant-based food products. Again, I'm here for a response. We empower entrepreneurs, impact tech entrepreneurs, to scale their sustainable innovations and businesses. And I'm uh, happy to present to you Priyanka, Srinivas, sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, welcome her. Thank you. Breaking the wall of unsustainable food. Priyanka Srinivas, the Live Green Company. Thank you, Heba. And hi, everyone. I'm Priyanka, and we are breaking the wall of unsustainable food. So let me take you back to my family, and that's my little niece. She was adopted. And when she was adopted, we were so sure that we wanted to give her the best possible nutrition that was available. So we went to the supermarkets, tried to do a lot of research, and realized that the food in the supermarkets are filled with nasties. Then we dug deeper, only to realize that the world is in a race against time. By 2050, we have 10 billion mouths to feed. There's a 4x increase in immunity and lifestyle-based diseases. 2x resource crunch and 2 degree climate change. Health and sustainability are the biggest issues of our time. So we became so passionate about this mission that we, we moved 18,000 kilometers from India to Chile to start Livrin Co. in our pilot market, Chile. The reason we did that is because we wanted to start the company in a small geography to test, learn, and iterate with minimal resources and Chile fit the bill. Because its retail structure works similar to the US and Europe. It has free trade agreements with over 60 countries, and programs like Startup Chile that are funded by the government encourage foreign entrepreneurs like us. And then we became minimalists. We moved to a container home even before Elon, and that's our house on the farm. So the last generation was of Plant Revolution 101, which focused on removing the animal from the equation, and it gained mainstream popularity. Even then today, 70% of our diets is filled with ultra-processed food, and this is causing immunity deficiencies, lifestyle diseases, increase in mortality rate, and including cancer. The industry, the food industry, re relies on these 7,000 plus synthetic additives. But did you know nature has to offer us 450,000 plants, 10 million compounds, and just 1% is explored by modern science? So what we did, we started building Charaka. Charaka is our technology platform and we put the best minds together from across the world. And that is how we built Charaka, our recommendation engine, where we collect a lot of information from ancestral wisdoms, from existing research, and our own lab researches. And we come up with 100% natural plant solutions to be able to replace the animal as well as the synthetic and ultra-processed additives in the food. So welcome to the Plant Revolution 2. So thanks to Charaka, we were able to replace the milk, the eggs, and all the additives in our ice creams with 100% natural plant alternatives. So what we did was Charaka first scanned all the labels of existing ice creams in the market, and then it categorized the additives and its functionalities. Then it went deeper and started to characterize its organolytic properties, its mechanical, taxonomy, functional, nutritional, and molecular. And then Charaka's algorithms went and helped us with providing recommendations from our plant databases as to what could be replaced with what. We used that data and then went into the lab, looked at cost structure, pricing, and various other factors, and then brought in our formulations. Because of the ancestral databases, we are able to cut down the research and development time with over 10x. So our, our business model is we license our formulations to existing retailers and manufa food manufacturers globally for a licensing fee. 
We also sell ingredient replacements to these companies, like how Coca-Cola does. So think of us as the intel inside for the food industry. We want to be a part of this revolution by collaborating with existing players, because it's already a 180 billion US dollar market with no clear market leader. We have put together a globally successful team of engineers, scientists, and hustlers to be able to make this possible. I worked with companies, and I'm the business lead with working with companies like Target. My co-founder, Sasikant, is an engineer. Our CTO, Santosh, comes from the best technology schools with over 20 years of experience in machine learning and data science. And our head of science, Deepthi, is a master's in food science technology as well as toxicology. We did an external technology pilot of Characa with the biggest food manufacturer of Mexico, Sigma Alimentos, which has presence in over 18 countries. We launched product lines under our own brand, Levrinco, in the Chilean market to show commercial potential of the technology. In, since the pandemic, we have grown 10x. We work with four of the biggest retail chains in Chile. We have the biggest retailer and food manufacturer of Mexico who have picked up minority stake in our company. And currently, we are closing an oversubscribed round of our pre-Series A. Uh, our focus is to be able to imp cause an impact, create an impact by 2030 by servicing over 225 million consumers. And we are so excited to share that we are the first B Corp certified company from Latin America. Finally, it is not about a few people living green perfectly. It's about billions doing it, even if it's imperfect. So let's live green, and let's start now. Thank you. That was, that was sharp. OK, let's get ready to, for questions and use these four minutes we have. Yes, we have one question here, please. And I check, I know that online we have a little delay. So if you want to ask questions from online, please do it fast at the beginning. Please. A question about your technology, your uh, recommendation engine or the To what extent does that um, predict well the ingredients that you're ending up using, or how much then research goes into it? What's the sophistication of it, and what's the database around it? Perfect. That's a great question. So as an initial star a state startup, currently our recommendation efficiency is at around 70%, because the algorithms and the technology needs takes time to learn and to understand, because these the recommendations go into labs, their research, and there is human intervention when it comes to understanding certain things that the computer doesn't understand. For example, in one of our products, we use avocado instead of one of a synthet synthetic additive, and the technology didn't know that it would oxidize in the final product. So those are things that we capture through our lab research and feed it back so that eventually, with time, we are looking at a 90-plus uh, recommendation efficiency. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm going to take this one, and then I will take the online question coming up. Please. If you, if you, you, you just said you have your own lab, right? And I think your solution is, an, is a digital solution. It's probably a software. It's a program, right? If n now one of your collaborators or customers has, has an idea, are they able to actually add to your program, meaning is, is there is a learning capacity in there as well for your customers? So at this point of time, the learning that we did with one of the pilot that I just mentioned with Sigma, that they had a lot of data in their lab research because we went with a database approach and said, hey, for these additives, go ahead and try replacements with these are our top three recommendations. And from their research, we got a lot of information that we were able to feed back into the system. And then, and that is where we are looking at this collaborative business model, because that will help us accelerate the learning and make the technology faster with time. So the, question, the short answer is yes. <laughs> Wonderful. We have a question here to your right from online. Florian Dammert from Germany asks, does your platform explicitly consider the 13 essential amino acids that are actually the basis of a healthy diet? So uh, thank you for that question. Uh, when it comes to the technology, it has various parameters. It considers nutritional. It con considers functional. It also con considers sustainability. And cost is something that we are over and with time we are going to add, along with local availability. So across all parameters, yes, it considers rating. But that doesn't mean a client would go ahead and use it in that formulation. Because again, it comes back to business where there are certain things that they would like to add. There were certain things where they would like to remove. Uh, to finally be able to achieve what they're looking for. Some companies want extremely healthy products. Some companies are looking at a balance. So yes, they have the data to choose, but the choice depends on the final client. OK, we have one minute left for our last question. Exceptional opportunity. Frank, please. Yes. 
What's about the scalability? You need to, to quote the plants later on in, in a large scale. Well, when does this come in in the selection process? So in terms of the selection process, we understand that the alternatives currently, there are certain alternatives which are easily available in the market and can go through global supply chain. When we partner with ingredient companies, say Jordan as an example, or an ingredient or Kerry, but when they are ingredients which are more novel, that we see that it takes time for the industry to be able to adapt and for it to go large scale and be able to be used in final formulations. So that's the gap that we see. But clean label is an upcoming industry. Consumers are really looking for it. So we think that currently, today, it may seem not feasible. But tomorrow, like even pea protein, as an example, is currently going out of stock in the world because of the alternative proteins. So I, we always think it's, it's definitely scalable. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's it already with the questions. And we're going to go to Slovenia.